taking back control. In areas of your life, you may experience signs of disconnect whether financially, mentally, physically, or verbally. You may be scared of taking risks or putting your happiness in others' hands. You may often feel dissatisfaction or failure with your direction or relationships. You may lose a family member, and even decide to give up. During struggles, you may stop to feel sorry for yourself, or you may look back to see how far you have come. This is what it feels like to live the victim's lifestyle. When you are listening to passive voices of demonic spirits, you don't acknowledge what others are saying in the physical world. Living the victimist lifestyle allows influences from the physical and spiritual realm to consume your life, preventing righteous guidance from entering in. While it is up to us to change the cycles of abuse and vainness, it doesn't necessarily mean we are capable of doing so long-term wise. The Bible recount at least six occasions of Jesus casting out demons, although he may have cast out even more. It says Jesus commanded unclean spirits known today as demons with a loud voice to come out and they came out. Matthew 4:37, cast out mean to dismiss, eject, or reject the demonic spirits. It can also mean retrain the mind to process the gospel's history without the mythical themes. So, avoid taking in false beliefs and doctrines. Just believing in something doesn't form a victory, and may render fake glory, believing in something that is true forms a victory, and renders real glory. You don't need to insert opinions as truths, speak out about evil spirits or give up your religion. And you don't have to fear becoming disconnected while suffering, only fears becoming disconnected suffering not believing in God. Know your rights and insist others respect those rights. Do some research, and then educate yourself so you have the information needed to make good decisions, take back control, and make strategic moves. The Bible also records a need to heal during the process, this includes other health issues. Many people eat natural foods, some take vitamins and some use other methods or remedies. Determine your vitamin deficiencies and goals to obtain purification of the body. Change is a step-by-step -step process, but it won't happen overnight. Once you allow the change to manifest in your life, you can then live the lifestyle God intended. This allows you to put a foot down on bad influences to stand steadfast for God's sake. Plan strategies for making your life the way you want it to be. All to become a justifiable person who is wise. Failure and overcoming to fail means to have not met an expected success. Ultimately you must admit you have failed to move on. Also, you must acknowledge your successes, by admitting when you succeed. People who don't celebrate victories, neither acknowledges failures until someone points it out and then it becomes an overwhelming factor for most. Avoid not celebrating victories because it won't help to overcome trial tests. Example 1, Amber didn't meet an expected success, with a task that was to be completed at 4 p.m. And Rihanna pointed it out by saying, ah, you have failed. Amber said, no. It was complete by 3.30 p.m. Amber then acknowledged it wasn't completed. Avoid this type of denial, it can lead to lying. Example 2, Giovanni acknowledged he failed at a task. He admitted it to a nearby co-worker, the co-worker said, ah it is okay everyone has failed at that task. It is no big problem. This is an honest way to fail. Many of us have overlooked accomplishments to not annoy an enemy. However, you ought not to let an enemy control your failures or victories. Ultimately you change your perceptions of failure, and how it can be dealt with in your life. You are in control of them along with the successes. It is okay to fail, taking ownership of failure helps to overcome. Try not to take ownership of failure you didn't fail at. Be honest with yourself as well as others. In psychology, control refers to how a person regulates themselves or wishes to regulate their environment. There are identifiable types of control such as cognitive, desire, ego, effortful, emotional, inhibitory, motivational, perceived, situational, and social. Psychological control types definition. Cognitive, this describes the ability to control one's actions and thoughts. It is also known as a controlled executive, processing, or supervisory attention. Controlled behaviors are behaviors over which one has cognitive control, and is guided by maintaining good behavior, representing task goals, updating bad behavior responses, and inhibiting information irrelevant to the task goal. Cognitive control is often developed through reinforcement, and learning from previous experiences. Increased cognitive control allows a person to have increased flexibility in their ability to choose between conflicting stimuli. Cognitive control is commonly tested using the Stroop Color Word task, and the Erickson Flanker task. Desire, this applies to any circumstance, relationship, or subject that an individual may want to have some degree of control over. In sales, control desire is the amount of control a customer wants within the relationship. Control desire is often associated with perceived control, and studies that focused on people with lower control desire showed a correlation with greater psychological problems. Ego, this refers to the person's attempt to control appetites, emotions, impulses, or thoughts, attentional processes and task performances. 
failure of ego control is seen as a central problem in individuals who suffer from substance abuse disorders. Effortful, this refers to a type of self-regulation. Effortful control often interacts and is central in other forms of control such as emotional and inhibitory control. It is a broader construct than inhibitory control and involves working attention and memory shifting. Effortful control works by allowing people the ability to start or stop behaviors through attention management. Effortful control is theorized to be involved in the process of problem solving, and behavior regulation due to the top-down processing involved. Emotional, it is a term from the literature on self-regulatory psychology and refers to the ability to self-manage, regulate attitudes, and feelings that directly affect participant receptiveness to an implementation of training activities. Emotional control is often referred to as emotional regulation and is the process the brain undergoes to control and regulate emotional responses throughout the day. Emotional control balances and manages the physiological as well as a response to an emotion. The opposite of emotion regulation is emotional dysregulation which occurs when problems arise in the emotional control process that results in the inability to process emotions healthily. Emotional control contains several emotional regulation strategies including cognitive reappraisal, distraction, and emotional action controls. Inhibitory, this refers to another type of self-regulation that is defined as the ability to inhibit prepotent actions or thoughts flexibly, often in favor of a subdominant action, typically in goal-directed behavior. There are two types of IC, hot and cold. Hot IC involves activities or tasks related to emotion regulation, and cold IC involves abstract activities or tasks. In three main areas of life, attentional, behavioral, and motor, a lack of inhibitory control can lead to difficulties. Inhibitory control is also involved in the process of helping people correct, improve, and react to social behavior. A lack of inhibitory control can be connected with several mental disorders including attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD, behavioral inhibition, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Alcohol and drugs also influence one's inhibitory control. Motivational, this refers to the self-regulatory mechanism by which people can act on prescribed behaviors to implement training activities. It can be explained by the analogy of a student who before a test studies an hour each morning for two months, whether or not the student likes studying. Perceived, a person's belief that they are capable of obtaining the desired outcome, avoiding an undesired outcome, and achieving goals. High perceived control is often associated with improving adjustments, health, and relationships. Strategies for restoring perceived control are called compensatory control strategies. One's perception of perceived control is influenced by the future, the past, and the desired outcome of an event. Perceived control is often associated with the term locus of control. Perceived control can be broken down into two different categories including primary and secondary which deals with one's perception of control over the environment or one's wishes to control within that environment. Situational, this is part of leadership psychology that refers to the degree to which the situation provides the leader with potential influence over the group's behavior. Social, this refers to a person's skills in a social environment engaging in ways that help to reinforce and support his or her learning activities. Social control can be influenced by several factors including society's control of people's actions and behaviors, and the control a person has over their behaviors in public. Over time, the definition of social control has changed to include groups of people, in addition to individuals. Reaching full potential. Often down and up moments of confusion make people who suffer from demon dwellings compare themselves to others who are on a higher level intellectually. Especially young people who are not living out their full potential, but are experiencing physical realm or spiritual warfare attacks upon their character. This affects them daily intuitively, rationally, and socially through misguidance and why they need to take back control intellectually. Short-term memory and potential. Consequently, this occurs in the prefrontal cortex of the brain, it is a process of the brain. It is a very common problem for many people today. Since short-term memory works continually, storing small amounts of information for a short time 30 seconds or less, it can sometimes play an important role in whether you acknowledge determining your full potential. It requires practice and rehearsal to remember short-term. And if you can't remember, you won't want to practice or rehearse after using up your primitive energy. This is one reason there are more religious elderly than youth individuals, they rely heavily on traditions which are routines with short-term memory loss. It is very common throughout religion to rely solely on practice and rehearsal. This is so one doesn't get out of touch with reality completely, after the primitive energy is used up. Religion itself can be classified as a highly recommended comfort zone for those suffering from short-term memory. Yet, having familiar faces around can help remember things you needed to seek which were lost. This can include, destiny, dreams, eternal comforts, eternal mate, and goals all of which can help determine full potential and break bad habits. Why aren't most people reaching their full potential? Many people resist their highest potential avoiding extremities of future hardship or random notions that come with the responsibility of future life. We rather stay busy fulfilling desires which our addictions were incapable of being satisfied or pleased with. 
All this is to avoid righteous engagement for fear of being overtaken by unconscious and uncommon impulses that may become irresistible. Fear is being oneself without fear of criticism, judgment, or rejection. We don't always feel we handle these circumstances and emotions properly or may not be capable of doing so. It can be difficult when most people spend their entire day criticizing or judging things people do or say. They think they are a genius at doing so with much effort going into it. Once you have used your primitive energy up, you then need to be re-energized. You need the energy to sail through these emotions quicker to not be caught up persistently denying there is full potential to live out. Living life's full potential. First accept the person God has given you to be, to get what is possible of potential. Consider yourself a worthwhile human being through the grace of God. You can't want to live someone else's life, God needs your full focus to guide and make you complete. This can only be fully done from a righteous perspective. Once you obtain the amount of education and knowledge needed to reach the full capacity of life expectations, then you can reach the full potential God has for you. Desires and Fulfillments To desire is too long for a wish that possibly needs to be fulfilled by self or others. To fulfill is to carry out a promise or wish, either usually brings possibilities and satisfaction. If you don't have the same desires as a person you may be comparing your success with, this means you won't feel a need to carry out the same fulfillment they have to get to their accomplishments. Fulfillment brings their desires into reality. Also, if you haven't had those same desires others won't fulfill those needs for you either. To reach full potential you must desire doing so otherwise, you won't carry out the fulfillment needed to reach full potential. If you need guidance reaching your full potential, surround yourself with people who have the same goals you do. This is to find out things needed or ways to carry out the fulfillment needed. These are reasons you cannot base your success upon what others have, it will only have you feeling delusional about your call, destiny, or direction in life. 12 Ways to Reach Full Potential 01. Envision bigger accomplishments, plan strategic goals, keep them, and use available time wisely. 02. Stay in touch with your spiritual guidance, utilize righteous determination and imagination regularly. 03. Live outside your comfort zone, but spend wisely. 04. Embody a positive attitude by exercising patience, and apologize when needed. 05. Stay focused on the current task. 06. Don't complicate things worse than they already are, speak truths, and don't blame others. 07. Re-energize continually. 08. Enjoy each moment of making wise choices and staying true to commitments, also own your failures and successes. 09. Don't run from fear be accountable for your actions, this includes both future and past fears. 10. Observe people's intentions and notions, but don't be impulsed or overwhelmed by them. 11. Work with people of authority, don't work against them. 12. Acknowledge criticism, judgment, and rejection as a trial test. But not as setbacks can't be overcome. 13. Stop abandoning paths in life, work through obstacles, and overcome them consistently and diligently. Emotional Intelligence People with high emotional intelligence process information wisely in mental, job, and leadership areas. Long-term emotional intelligence enables control over empathy, motivation, self-awareness, and regulation along with social skills. The goal is to use your ability, to process emotional information accurately to navigate through social environments responsibly. Though most intelligent people are educated, acquiring knowledge to navigate enables doing it appropriately. Improving your emotional intelligence means being open and honest with other people's needs, and taking responsibility for your actions. Listening to all details enables control over your emotions. Not criticizing, judging, or stereotyping people before getting the facts helps puts yourself in their place. Acknowledging you aren't perfect after hurting someone's feelings and then apologize for shows respect.